Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. What you are about to experience is not a show for entertainment. It is a review of the down-to-earth events that made the American frontier. In less than 15 years, this great nation will celebrate the 20th century. We do not know what glories await us in the future, but we do know the past that laid the foundation. And that foundation was not built from heroes, but from the anonymous settler. Their home was but a shack roofed in with sod. Oft times the floor was made of clay. One door shut out the wind and storm. One window greeted the dawning day. These brave souls survived not only nature, but the savage instincts of man, paving the way for the heroes that endured. Welcome, men, to real events enacted by men and women of the American frontier, to whose courage, strength, and above all, their faith, this piece of our history is dedicated. On the beginning, one, two. That's a real thing. <laughs> Don't touch him. All right, everybody get each rabbit to the dispensary right away. That's not each rabbit. Brown horse. Dark. Here you guys help help take him over there. Come on. All right, now be be careful with him now. Tell Joy that she should not get on the horse in the back. It's fake. Okay, We're in the authentic sure. business. I was thinking if we use some fire, set the cabin on fire. Fire? That's not a bad thought at all. So one morning I'm wandering through the camp, and I spot this this scrawny looking kid lying underneath the wagon. I drag him out. I take one look at him, and I know I can make him a star. I ask him, what's your name? He says, Cody, Bill Cody. I say, what do you do? He says, I'm a scout and a buffalo hunter. Well, I'm really eager to write about somebody, because I got a batch of exciting new plots I might take to Hickok, except I'm mad at him. So I say to the kid, from now on, your name is Buffalo Bill, and in six months, the whole damn country's going to know about you. 
if you didn't have an Indian on the top of that tower, he could shoot a flaming arrow right into the settler's cabin. That would have been country need. At a church service in Deadwood City, I met and rubbed elbows with a young man named William F. Cody. I was so impressed by his skill as, as a marksman and his success as a hunter that I nicknamed him Buffalo Bill. Morning, Missy. Hey, Nick, take a look at this. How's the helmet coming? see how good she's doing with the left hand. Show him, honey. What's his name? Oh, uh, just like the old Missy. And sure enough, in a few months, those stories come out. They're a big success, and the kid comes looking for me. Scared to death about the legend I created, but real excited about his new fame. And again, I say just one thing, and only one thing. I say, Bill, any youngster like yourself who figures to set the world on fire, best not forget where he got the matches. I want you to Frank, back me up on this again, Bill. Yes, the Indian music in the Sandy's cabin is, is the, the wrong thing, but it's too Ukrainian. Camp, right. I want to protect her from the world's ways I'm not. Right. Excuse me, I'm sorry. When I was a stock actor, there was more organization. Which is why you've got to make it clear to Bill just how serious this situation is. When did this transmit come in? Is this something I have to pay attention to right now? What is this, Ed? Nate, are you listening to me, Nate? I have a number Excuse me, sir. What is, we're trying to have a conversation here about Annie Oakley. Uh, Thank you. Don't mean to press you on this, but I am Annie's husband. Costumes. I can't and tell I have what it a looks like. Solemn like duty. Uh, Damn it, Nate. Are you going to tell Bill or not? Maybe you'd better speak to him yourself, Frank. What can I do for you, gentlemen? All right, I will. Right, sir. What's the matter with your act? Mr. Butler, sure, sir, well, what? Major Bergson there with him now. He doesn't want to be disturbed. Oh, yeah? Well, this is damn important. Now, he said. What? Bill, I don't see you, Frank. Good to see you. Listen, uh, my glass got empty somehow. Could you put a couple of fingers in there for me? Yeah, I can have a testable. We present aspects of Frank, Frank. Thank you, Frank. Including Mexicans. Thank you, Frank. Pleasure. Now, if you don't want to be Mexicans, I'm sure we can find some very, very good people who would like to be. Well, no, sir. We, don't, we still want to be part of the show. You do? Yes, sir. And you want to be Mexicans? Well, no, we don't want to be Mexicans if we can't. Well, you know, when I was traveling with the troubadours, there were times when I was asked to be a colored. Now, do I look like a colored? Oh, no, no, sir. No, but when I had to play a colored, I was a colored. I thought a colored, I drank a colored, I walked a colored. I was a colored. All right, you can be Rodriguez and Ricardo, you can be Morales and Miguel, you can be Los Gatos Grande, Los Latigueros de Mexico. That has to do with whips. OK, that's it. Los Latigueros de Mexico. I'm going to give you an almost top spot. Listen, right Frank, show, would you mind right getting Cowboys out of the middle of my conference, conference bill? That's my conference here, here and wait your turn like the others. Class. Amigos. Ed? Yes, sir. I thought I said no interruptions. Yes, sir, Uncle Will, but so I now told honor it. my wishes. Yes, sir. Adios, pard. Wish me luck. John, you got me. You don't need luck. Remember, anything historical is mine. Everything historical is yours, Bill. Come on. Get up. Major. Get up. Yes, sir. Bullseye, heroic villains, revolutionized Indians, whites. What's the plot, Major? The plot, the plot. Why don't you string those pearls together and devise us a nice little Buffalo Bill fable, uniquely original? Whoa. Let me read it when I get back. All right. I'll even give you the legend. Enemies in 76, friends in 85. <laughs> Godspeed. Get up, boy. Get up. Whoop. Get up. Annie. Annie. Oh. Excuse me. I, um... Ah, the Shakespeare of the half dime. Sit down. Something's up, Ned. Bill and Nate sent Burke out of here on the fly. Well, you got any ideas? Burke gave me a few clues. Something about engines and whites, heroic villain. 50 bucks a week, foes in 75, friends in 86. Foes in 75, friends in 86. Well, that shouldn't be hard to figure. Nate and Bill are in the big time now. They can afford to spend 50 bucks a week. Now tell me, what engine villain do you know who's worth that amount? Sitting Bull. Sitting, Sitting Bull? Why, sure. Is he tame? What about the Army? The Army wouldn't love it. They can't shoot him now. Not till the Sioux chief signed those treaties. So they put him in a wild west, make a broad ass tool of him, the rest is easy. A rock ain't a rock once it becomes gravel. 
What do you mean by the, the rocks and gravel? It's just Puntline's way of saying he's lost his power. He's tame. Hey. Every great author has his literarisms. Mine are uh, evolving around. I heard the new axe. General Custer's brother. That's not what we heard, Eddie. No, who did you hear was? We know who it is, Ed. Who? Tell me. Sitting Bull. Sitting Bull? Sitting Bull. Sitting Bull? I didn't know he was interested in the show business. If he wasn't interested in the show business, he wouldn't have become a chief, Ed. In my youth, I fought for the young brave of the Sioux tribe named Standing Bull, and I beat him. When he sat on the ground after the fight was over and swore revenge on me by all the gods of heaven and hell, I laughed at him, and I called him Sitting Bull. I tell you, there ain't no business like the show business. Hi, Jerry. Sitting Bull. Now, a whole lot of folks are saying that Bill's drink it has destroyed his memory, but it ain't so. Besides, Bill wouldn't let anything do harm to his regard for his drink. So you can put those stories to rest. But Bill's drinking, well, that's a different matter. Why, just two months ago, Nate Salisbury asked Bill to become a foe of the cork. And Bill promises solemnly that he'll never be seen under the influence again. Until one day, Bill tells Nate he's been given the subject a great deal of thought, and he figures that he'll need at least one drink a day. Now, of course, Bill's daily ration is in a schooner the size of a small shipping vessel. I saw her the other day between the tents and, and she was hugging a man. Ed, don't talk to Annie while she's using live ammunition. Your hand is shaking. Honey, I'm doing the best I can. I'm fighting wind out here. That was good. Get everybody to the uh, podium for no The entire company to the podium for no On the triple. Hurry up. To the podium. Is everybody here? Do I do? No, you can't. Uh, you look very stylish, One more, Missy. that's all, honey. And then you've got to rest. Down. Both Buffalo Bill and Frank. I had our reserve about the show. Uh, we'd bitten off more than was chewable, and that by enlarging our show, we had possibly disimproved it. Oh, well, that's fine. That's really fine. Oh, Bill, Bill, I have got to talk to you about a matter. Honey, sorry. Please. What's up? Uh, we got a serious problem on our hands. Uh huh. Ned Buntline's back in camp. Yeah. Good. Yep. Did you hear that? Why didn't you tell me? Even down to the Indian. But this is. Now, Nate Salisbury doesn't long wind, but he does want to say he's proud that you're proud to be part of America's national family. And you too. Nate! What, Bill? Anyway, Bill, I know how damned upset you'd be if you was to write anything harmful about our Annie. What lines on the ground? I know, he's back at his old table. But all you have to do is give me the word, and I'll arrange for him to leave. Uh, Appreciate your concern, I couldn't Bill. do that, Nate. Right? Uh, yes. Honey. Listen, I you go on over there now and get rid of him without me telling him. And don't you tell me that you told him. Right. Well, what 
What's going on over there? It's a brown horse's funeral. I told you three days ago we lost him. He was a show show, wasn't he? He was. Uh, you know, uh, I won the Medal of Honor for killing every show show in a raiding party in 72. Didn't seem that long time ago. Yes, sir, you rode into the valley of death and rode out again. Remember, son, the last thing a man wants to do is the last thing he does. Hey. Well, it's the best rehearsal yet. And your, your entrance with the top was tremendous. That was a good idea yours. Well, it was that? Giving the engine slower horses. Bill? Money in the bank. Oh, remember what I told you about telling him. Right, I won't tell you. Business is good, and it's getting better. That's because times are bad, getting worse. That's when the show business flourishes. Times are bad. Hope it stays that way. <laughs> the place will be open in three minutes. Well, I'll be goddamned if it ain't nervous and neat. Front line, you're not doing anybody a favor by being here. I ain't in the favor business, Nate. I want you to leave my camp right now. Surely is your camp, ain't it? A damn fine job you're doing. Much better than I could have ever done. What a fine citizen you're making out of Bill. Why, you don't even seem like the same man anymore. Never gets into trouble. Never looks bad in public. All I care about is the Wild West. I'm going to codify the world. Well, why didn't I think? Because I'm the only partner Bill Cody ever had who tells him the truth. And in the end, we always agree. I was taught that when two partners always agree, one of them ain't necessary. Look, Buntline, we've just signed the most futurable act in our history. So I don't want anything, anybody creating problems. Who's that? The act. Sitting Bull. Sitting Bull. Well, Nate, that's quite a coup. <sighs> but you tell Bill Cody that I ain't leaving until he comes in here and personally invites me out. We have one of the great chiefs of the Sioux tribe, Sitting Bull, here with us. And he is going to be in the same arena with the noblest white skin of them all. I'm also speaking about the uh, great counterpoint, Sitting Bull and William F. Cody, Pahaska. Nate, John's going to ride to the top of Bill's list for this one. Charm, urbanity, sincerity, sweetness, unusual speak of a man as the recreation of God in human form. Uncle Will? Uncle Will? We've only got a few minutes. Mm-hmm. You must be the big one in the red blanket. You sure don't look like no ordinary engine. I ain't buying no ordinary engine. Go on and help Nate with a welcome, Mr. Freddy. Yes, sir. Thank you, son. Good trip. Hello, Johnny. A How great, are you? great, great event. Buck. Good day. Got more scalps than any other Indian chief alive. But he ain't so big. All set. Number four, Major Brooks return. Done. <laughs> A melody for every momentous moment. Where's Bill? Son of a bitch must be seven foot tall. 
getting smaller every year. Ah, I'm ready to dispose of my prison. Sweet McLaughlin, you are now in Cody land. Sitting Bull is no longer your prisoner, but a star in the Buffalo Bill heavens. As far as I'm concerned, he's a murderer, and he's my responsibility until I turn him over to Cody. Just let me introduce Mr. Nate Salisbury. Nate, you must meet this remarkable character. This I'm is Bill James Cody's McLaughlin of Standing Rock. Yes, uh, he'll be here momentably. Uh, I trust you had a pleasant trip. I had a miserable trip. I don't like horseback and especially delivering Indians to some damn circus. Ah, now, you one thing the Wild West Show is not was is a circus. Mm -hmm. This is all just part of the show business, part of uh, Buffalo here. Bill's so non-airing sense of theatrical time. Get old. It's my star. He belongs to all of us, Nate. Our star. America. you had a comfortable journey, Major. Bill, dear Bill. Major. Gentlemen, in this moment fraught with friendship, with history humming harmonic overtones, Bill, I have the distinct pleasure of presenting Chief Sitting Bull. Chief, it gives me pleasure to present to you the Honorable William F. Cody, Buffalo Bill. Well, I would just like to take this occasion to congratulate you on your safe journey and to extend a titanically momentous welcome to Buffalo Bill's Wild West. Uh, me and my staff are simply the best at what we do, and what we do is to make the best look better. Now, when you find out what we got planned for your act here. Hiya, G. <laughs> Golly, it's the runt. My name's William Halsey. Chief Sitting Bull has chosen to speak through me. The many moons of his incarceration has emptied his strength, and he wishes to rest. What's the incarceration? Jail. Mm. Well, uh, Halsey, Halsey, that's a white name, isn't it? Is that little white blood in you there, Halsey? <laughs> Also, you tell your chief <clears throat> that the people standing in front of him are, are part of the finest spectacle in the history of the show business. I've watched them all grow from raw, plain talents into personages of importance. You tell your chief that we can do that for him, too. And I promise you, after even one season in this show, he'll never, ever be mistaken for a below-average, run-of-the-mill, forgettable evil chief. Plus, He's going to have something to fall back on in his later years, something that, uh... Long trip, huh, Chief? Well, uh... I just wanted to welcome you here, and uh, most specifically to Buffalo Bill's Wild West. You'll find that it, uh, ain't all that different from real life. Gentlemen, engines, come on, Brigham. <laughs> I thought he was the big one, too. Where'd you get that idea? How big is the little one off the horse? Oh, um... Burke. Mm, <laughs> Don't worry, Nate. He's big enough to fill the arena. <laughs> so, Sitting Bull's the little fella, huh? 
You don't look so savage to me. And I'm gonna sleep with a shotgun under my bed every night. You know, sitting bull is famous for scalping folks in their beds. I sure hope Bill can handle them. I don't think it's disappropriate to play a, a personal chord here. Now, we all know sociable chaff is cheap. But history, real history, is hard come. And the man I'm about to celebrate is not a mere impersonation of a patriot, but the true monarch of genuity. Scout, showman, family person, valued partner. <laughs> America's national entertainer, William Frederick Bill. Uncle Will. Bye. Uh, I told you. True. Right. Tell you. Sitting Bull don't want to live with the other engines. Wait a minute. Hold it, boys. Now, what was that? Sitting Bull doesn't seem to like his recommendations. Uh, what's wrong? He didn't exactly say, Uncle Will. He just said he wants to live across the river on the flat ridge. <laughs> he wants to live across the river. If you're smart, you'll lock them dog Nobody eaters in the stockade. Nobody can cross that bull, not, not us, not you, nobody. <laughs> Gentlemen, that particular river is impossible to cross. I mean, we've already lost, I don't know, three horses, six Blackfeet Indians, and a barge load of show equipment valued at, what was it, 16,000? Yeah, what about if he does get across? Man crosses that river, he deserves it. in a strategic position to escape. You can't get there from here. Go on, boys, tell him. No, yes, no. Impossible to cross, huh? Boys, that's exactly where I want sitting bull, on that flat ridge up there. You see, that way I can watch him all the time from my chair here. <laughs> <laughs> McLaughlin? Oh. See, I'm smart enough to know that the difference between a white man and an engine in a situation like this is us whites are smart enough. You know that an engine always turns down your first offer. <laughs> Laugh it up, boys! <laughs> Uncle Will, how did Steve go across the river? Good evening, Mr. Halsey. Well, we Why are they coming? Time. Should we holler for help? We are the help. Nate, Nate. Should we holler for help? Shadow. I'll handle this one, Bill. Bill, sitting bulls on his way here. He seems to have his whole group with him. Our uh, unpredictable friends seem to be on the warpath, and they're moving in this direction. I see them. <laughs> Uncle Will, they crossed the river again, and they ain't even wet. They did, huh? We're with you, Bill. Sonia, finish that later. Well, Chief. Twilight Raid, huh? <laughs> Tell me, what do you got in your mind? Sitting Bull has said that he is here by the will of the great spirits. And by their will, he is chief. His heart is red and sweet. But whatever passes near tries to lick him with its tongue. And the bears taste the honey, and the green leaves lick the sky. If the great spirits have chosen anyone to be leader of their land, it is Sitting Bull. Halsey, you tell Sitting Bull that Buffalo Bill says his leaves can turn whichever way he wants, so long as he knows which way the wind is blowing. I think I gave him back the same kind of murky logic that he gave us. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Ozzy, 
What Buffalo Bill means to say Buffalo is... Buffalo Bill doesn't need an interpreter, Bert. What Buffalo Bill means to say is that Sitting Bull is here to relive great moments of his history for the pleasure of thousands of paying customers. Sitting Bull says that history is nothing more than disrespect for the dead. When did he say that? He don't even look interested. Sitting Bull's mind is rested and clear, and he is ready to negotiate. What are you talking about? That's already been done, right, Burke? Hmm? Burke? All oh, right, right, right. Sitting yes. Bull wants blankets. Well, they're cold. You think we could ride 8, 10, 12 blankets into the deal? Right. Sitting Bull wants blankets for all his people at Grand River. Well, now, wait a minute. Mm. What do you think this is, an army surplus store? There are only 106 Hong Papa Sioux left at Grand River. 106? God, Burke, five years ago, we counted 10,000 braves alone. Mr. Halsey, the Wild West is delighted to give the blankets as a gift to those people. Burke, get a story out on this on the transmit right away. I'm sure we can get featured. You got copy. it. Splash it over the front pages. The benevolence of Buffalo Bill. Great human interest stuff. A fascinating follow-up to the historic events of today, Chief. All right. Negotiations settled. Weary, weary, but there's no rest for the press. Get over there and see that he don't steal anything. Sitting Bull wants six weeks' salary to send to his people now. He wants what? I thought Burke took care of that. What the hell is going on here? Music box. Mr. Holtz, these demands are not Music. only appropriate, but totally out of the question. You get Sitting Bull to sit down. Oh, I want to look him in the eye when we talk about money. Sitting Bull knows the value of money, but he never talks about it. Hey, 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 Mr. Halsey, what you're talking about is prepayment, and we don't do that without a contract. Also, he will own his own photographs. Hell, he will! I got all photographic rights and historics. Sitting Bull says a man may never let go of his face. Therefore, he will own his own photographs. My ass! Oh. Nate! Now that's highway robbery, and he knows it. Ed, would you... I ain't gonna put up with it. You ain't gonna put up... We ain't gonna put up with it. It's Bedlam in here. I can't think. I'm gonna lie down and take a nap. Margaret! Stop the singing. We lost the moment. Are you gonna be sharp with me, Bill? Margaret! You see? You've upset Buffalo Bill. Halsey, tell the chief we pay for work performed, however, he wants to put a signograph on a six months contract, that's another matter. Ed, let it be. No contract. Why not? All my other top acts have them. Sitting Bull will not make a contract he may not be able to honor. Why wouldn't he honor it? Sitting Bull stays only until he sees the Great Father. Great? You mean the President? Yes. Did Burke promise you that? Sitting Bull no longer accepts promises from white men. His dreams told him that this is the place he would meet the Great Father. Sitting Bull is here because he dreamed he'd meet President Cleveland. Heave! Dead on, Bill. Well, what does she have to say this time? Uh, dear husband, your deeds as a frontier hero are pale compared to your adventures with opera singers and milkmaids. Heave! Heave! You are also the cheapest man who ever lived and a profane drunkard as well. Heave! That's Mr. Oakley there. Yes. Name is Butler Burke. Oh, 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 Frank, Frank, sorry. Oh. Jesus, hold it, honey. <laughs> Therefore, I have instructed my lawyers to draw up divorce articles that will ensure our separation for good and make me a rich woman in the process. Now, I want you to miss this one, just till you get the feel of it. Heave! Take your time. You can miss by a lot, darling. That was good. That was right in the middle. Did you want to hit it in the middle? Your wife? Heave! Lulu. Will they clear, Darrell? Hard and I, Buffalo Bill. Bring. All right. Two lessons. This ticket. Here you see the Mexican and the shooter act. Jewel! Major? I'm getting some longer cigars from Jules. I think you'll feel more comfortable with them. Bill. Buffalo Bill, monarch of the West. 
It delights me to present this compellingly cornucopious canary, this curvaceous cadenza in the companion of classical chanson, this collation of champagne and columbine, this cultivated coloratura from Colorado. Words fail me. Lucille Ducharme. Of course, Handel's Ronaldo. husband of Count Egenweiler was a champion trap shooter. Trap shooting's a different thing, ma'am. Not taking anything away from your second, uh... Deceased. Husband. He used a shotgun that sprayed. The pistol's a more exacting weapon. Burke, would you take the young lady to my, uh, private view chair? Good morning, girl. Hey, what's going on out there? I'm gonna show Bull his Custer act. Well, they're just waiting for the downstick. Here's your scenario. About Cleveland. At the first, he's marrying some society deb at the end of the month. The second, he's got a Republican Congress to contend with. I think we can safely advance Bull the money he wants. I mean, if he's waiting for Cleveland to show up, we got him for life. Mm-hmm. Bring Sip and Bull Hall to over here. You keep those tune tempos tight, Bill. Gray, all right? Yeah. Be ready to dance the ball. Morning, Chief. Ah. Halsey, uh, if you and the Chief will follow me, in just a few short steps, he's going to become part of America's national family. If you're going to watch, watch from the other side, Buck. All right, Izzy? Okay, short boss. Oh, uh, uh, by the way, you can tell the Chief we've decided to give him the two-week salary as token of our friendship. So he will admire the big gray. Say hello to Buffalo. Ma'am. Poor thing is frightened. That bird can't get out of there, can he? <laughs> <laughs> I hope you realize that we're the only producers to have the courage to show the red and the white without taking sides. <laughs> well, Hi. hello there, Chief. Uh, which way are your leaves blowing? Hey, you better get this thing going. Ten stick! I see General George Armstrong Custer leading the courageous men of the 7th Cavalry deep into the Indian territory known as Little Bighorn. Super. Exhausted from tearing the wounds the of a cowardly Sioux ambush from the day before. Suddenly, <laughs> Indians appear, led by the fiercest Indian of all, Chief Sitting Bull. Bull oh, Chief. We got a colored stand in place for you because he's the closest thing on our staff to a real Indian. Custer knows it's going to be the fight for his life. Oh! Ah! Sitting Bull uses an old Indian ploy. He fakes Custer into thinking it's going to be an honorable duel to the death between the two great leaders. Then, bam! Gets shot in the back by all the other Redskins. Sitting Bull says the battle did not happen that way. Sitting Bull was not present on the battlefield. He was making medicine and dreaming. He saw many horses upside down and blue skeletons floating up to the promised land. Halsey? I think. What did he shoot that gun for? Hey, Chief, put that gun down. You're going to hurt somebody. Sitting Bull thinks you're a great marksman. He can see how you kill so many of his buffalo. Nur sein Herz ist so weit, nur sein Herz. 
my hair is going to be as long as Custer's. Was. sitting here thinking about us. I'm glad, Bill. But the more I think about us, the less I think about sitting bull, and that ain't good for the Wild West. I've never interfered with the Wild West. The point being, that little bastard ain't gonna make my life easy. I can't deal with him and deal with you and be my best at the both, so what I'm trying to say is I think it's time for you to, to go. Oh, no, Bill, no. And the quicker you go, the quicker you can start missing me. Oh. Alas, my love, you do me wrong to cast me off this courtesy. What are you doing here? Sitting Bull has come to tell you what he will do in your show. Show? God, the sun ain't hardly up yet. Sitting Bull's thoughts do not have a time schedule. Uh, uh, let me see if I can get myself together. Go on, sit down. Tell Sitting Bull to sit down. I'll be. Jesus Christ, what an hour. I don't know, but you, know, you keep your eye at him. I'll go get your uncle. me this land, and in protecting it, I have had a hard time. The rivers flow with the blood of my people. The wind blows the echoes of lies. The white man has stolen the truth. That is a great and classic Indian face. You will build the village at Kildare Mountain. Sitting Bull's people will be working. Children will be playing. They're waiting for Colonel McLaren and his horse soldiers to talk peace. The Sioux will have no weapons and embrace the soldiers with open arms. Then McLaren will slaughter every man, woman, child, and dog in the village. Hey, oh, hey, hey, oh, hey, oh, hey, oh, hey. 
He's horrible. It'll work. Still. We can still do the Indians attacking. Just we're gonna have mad music. That is what Sitting Bull has chosen to do. Chief, we haven't had a heart-to-heart. -heart. I think it's about time. Now, uh, see, I've listened to Halsey. He's got a lot of guts, because he did insult me in my own house. He called me a coward, said I murdered uh, women, old men, uh, children. And dogs. Yeah, dogs. You're not getting much of this, are you? You got till noon to get out of here! You're finished! Fire through! Oh. I can't believe that little runt would treat me like that. It's harder being a star than an engine. Everything on this table I'm taking with me. Captain What's Sibley. this? How did I ever... Animal, we'll pack your guns now. Osborne, don't touch my gun! Uncle Will! Uncle Will, something awful bad. Annie... We already know, she's Eddie. Le she's talking leaving. about that. Nate, she going through with it? Looks like it. I spoke with her, Burke spoke with her. Frank, she seems dead set Frank, about it. is that right? Afraid so, Bill. You know I can usually steer wherever you want her to go, but not this time. Why is everything such a big problem around here? Frank, is it a matter of money? Well, money might help. Oh, come now, Frank. Money has nothing to do with it. What we're talking about here is Annie's principles. What about my principles? What about them? I think you should have her leave. Nate? Hard lines, Nate. But... Wait a minute, wait a minute. I can't let her go. She owes me too much. I'll go down and talk to her, but I ain't changing my mind about that engine. You're right. Hold fast on that. Bill, if it comes bill. up or if it'll help at all, you can tell her I love her. And then you take this. How would you like this? Here, take it. Wayne! Yeah? Come give me a hand. I don't know what you mean. We got problems. Yeah, these folks are. No problem, Bill. You know, that. I could expect disrespect yes. from anybody except you. Oh, this is pretty. Now, why are you sitting in the middle like this? What did Bull ever do for you? You wanted to show the truth to the people. Why can't you accept that just once? Because I got a better sense of history than that. Besides, I say what goes on in this show. You say. Goddamn engine run this half ass half breed. I'm sorry. Got any whiskey around here? Any way you want this chair? If you send Bull to Standing Rock, they'll kill him. That is not my problem. You can have this. Chair. Oh. That'll just about fit you. Do I want this? Here. The little bastard can stay. <laughs>
without bodily risk from nature's fury. And pursuing the brave and bountiful love is our star, America's national hero, Bill Cody Buffalo Yes, he was truly born to entertain. No ordinary man would have the foresight to take credit for acts of bravery and heroism that he could have done. And no ordinary man could realize what tremendous profits could be made by telling the pack of lies in front of witnesses like it was a truth. No, Bill Cody can only trust his senses. And when his senses fail him, he might just see things as they really are. And now, as the troopers reassemble, would you join in the singing of Buffalo Bill's favorite American song by Francis Scott Key, Oh Say Can You See? It's Buffalo Bill's belief that this could and should be the next national anthem. Would you please rise? attraction unique and unparalleled the foremost woman marksman in the world the little girl of the western plains the peerless lady wingshot annie oakley annie oakley first flower of the west assisted by frank the world's most handsome living target butler say hello to frank 
Take a sweet time on this, honey. This exacting feat requires I'll wait forever. Post concentration. So please may we request that you remain as quiet as possible. Come on. The bullet will split and hit those two targets. Is that possible? It's never been done before. Come on, honey. Oh, how close! A grave! Agreed. She missed, but so close. Give her a big hand, ladies and gentlemen. Miss, and now, once again. Teeny coin. Again. What? Frank, again. Oh, no, Annie, you don't have to do that. We Are love you, sure? you anyway. I can right do close. it, Frank. Get back. Get... Oh. Wait, honey, I lost Frank. my hat. You about ready? Stay with us, Lord. One more time. discover what the show business is all about. He's gonna come back in here and get down on his knees to me to do the Custer act. Bull's gonna suffer a worse defeat than Custer ever did. Custer could die. Bull's just gonna get humiliated. The most feared, the most murderous, the most colorful redskin alive. Here he comes, the battling chief of the Hunk Papa Sioux. Sitting Bull.
morning. You're up. Listen, I, uh, I'm really sorry about last night. It was the first show of the season, and boys like to kick up a little dust. I don't like to have them drink alone. I must have been kind of a disappointment. You look awful pretty in that light. Actually, uh, I've become something of a morning man. You know, there's no pressure. See, at night, and the whiskey we get here is, is uh, kind of dulls. Uh, Good morning to the Flying Dutchman. Yeah. Get away from me. He's all right in there. I mean, he doesn't have to get out a lot, does he? Get back! Oh! What are you doing to that poor little person? They're just horsing around. Oh, Bill! I... You got to go help me. Go out and stop them, and they might hurt him, please. All right. Now, come on! Come on! Oh, oh, baby. Terrible. You just stretch out there. I'll be right back. Nasty, nasty. Ah! Oh! <laughs> all right, boys, all right! <laughs> Let me down. Buck, put him down, my God. It's like a bull fighting a flea. Yeah, put me down. I get down there. You big ape? Son of a bitch. What? Buck! Let me down from here. Take a look up there and you'll see the problem. What were you doing? I was just having a little conversation. Of course you were. You always are. Oh, no. What do you think's happening? Sitting bulls making his exit. I wonder where that little son of a bitch went. Buck Taylor, get over there across the river right. and see what's going on. For real? I'm busy, sir. Look at that boy go. Rides like to win. Uh, the engine. Where? My God, is it? Why is it so dark in here? Hey, son! Get down! Ah, uh -huh. gotcha. Boys, I want a posse. Tough posse, you ride in ten. Me too. I'm a man. I'm a man. I'm a man. There's no way goes. about fox or fox. Oh, we're not taking this lion down. This boy, son of a bitch, now he's on. Oh, what a story. He's still a dream. He had a king. Damn. Damn. What's wrong? Well, I got trouble on my hands. Not that little cowboy. He wasn't hurt or something. No. The engine. The engine? They've escaped. <gasps> All of them? Nope, just the dangerous ones. I gotta go get them. How long will you be gone? As long as it takes. You know, I'd never let anything come between us and our little... unless there was something real like this. Oh, damn it, where's my real jacket? Hey, let's go get Bill. Well, boss is formed. Where's Bill at? You know, knowing that you're laying there waiting for me would only serve to stiffen my resolve. <laughs> I hate birds. 
birds. Cody, don't you ever harm my flying Dutchman. Ed, what are you doing on that horse? I'm going with you, Uncle Will. Down off that horse. Your mother would never forgive me. Oh, Uncle Will. Jules, get on the horse. Get on the horse. Hey, Jules, we can oh, use your nose. Now, where's that engine supposed to be on his gate? Dressed for a ride, mounted on that high step and stallion of his. Any doubts concerning his legends are soon forgotten. Yes, Bill's fine physical portrait hides whatever faults his mind might possess. But even the least seasoned of trappers will tell you if you don't know what it is you're truly after, you're better off stay at home. There they are. Uncle Will! Uncle Will! Control yourself. That'll teach sitting bull a lesson. It's a question of law and order, Annie. Uncle Will knows the law and sitting bull's out of order. Well, here they come. All right, up stick. Now, as soon as they come over that little ridge, we're gonna... Wait a minute. I don't see sitting bull. Hold it! No, they're not there. They must be there. Maybe they're in the back. I don't see a sitting bull. I don't see no engines. Maybe they just didn't find them. Oh, they found them. No engines that have gotten away from Uncle Will. Maybe they're dressed in some of our clothes. All right, upstick. I think that's them. But no downstick. Just upstick. They're not there. Oh, my God. I don't see any Indians with them. That's because there ain't no Indians with them. Bill is the greatest Indian hunter of them all. And he led 15 of the greatest trackers into a territory that he knows better than the back of his own hand. Looking for an old man, a giant, five boys. It's not your fault, Bill. We made it clear from the very beginning that we have a camp, not a prison. 
That's right. We're not in the prison business. Better get to McLaughlin and tell him that he's gone. Sitting Bull escapes middle of the night after first trying to burn down the arena. I sure thought you'd catch him. Uncle Will, they weren't that far ahead. Ed, why don't you go close the gate? Never saw him refuse a drink before. I don't care what anybody says. God bless Buffalo Bill. God, he shot himself. Bill! 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 God, Bill! 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 Damn Bill. bird! Bill! What's he doing? What? Bill! Bill! Where Bill. was you, Bill? Bill. Get out of here! Sit down! Couple of those big buff got loose. We had to go chase them down. Too bad you couldn't join us. Where were you? It's the first moon of the month. That's not what Buffalo Bill asked you. Now, where the hell have you been? During the day of the first moons, Sitting Bull visits the sun in the mountains while his squaws move the teepees to the moon's path. Damn it, Halsey, stop sunning and mooning us. Now, where the hell have you been? You were up in the mountains, huh? Yes. Don't you think that's a little dangerous? Sitting Bull is familiar with mountains. What if I had sent somebody after you? Sitting Bull was not hiding. Sitting Bull has been with the mountains, and he realizes now that he must do more in the show than ride the Pinto. Well, there we are. We're back in business. Foes in 76, friends in 85. Why, Rick, I still don't know what he's talking about. You care to explain that? Sitting Bull has decided that he will do the only thing that he sees here that he would want to show his people. What's that? Sitting Bull will make the big gray dance. Responsibility is a funny thing. It's a lot different for stars than it is for ordinary folk. Oh, please, Mr. Buntline, this man is in pain. That's why stars spend so much time in front of the mirror. Seeing if their good looks and their word delivery can overcome their judgment. Not now, Mr. Buntline, please. A star like, like Buffalo Bill Cody makes a judgment. It becomes a commitment. It's got to stick no matter what the risk. The only way that I could have avoided seeing him on that mountain is if he never went to that mountain at all. Now, I can understand why he lied to me, because he's got to look good in front of his people the same way I got to look good in front of mine. But I'm generous and flexible. That was very good, generous and flexible. Ladies and gentlemen, please, will you try to find the places that we had specified for each and every one of you? Welcome, Braves. We welcome you with open arms. Wranglers! Wranglers on the Deadwood coach. Go easy there. I know the ladies in the interior perhaps like to be bounced around once in a while, but it wears out the equipment and it blurs the picture. This is an extremely impressive assemblage. Now, pay attention. Nate, uh, would you convey to Buffalo Bill that we are ready? Just tell him that we're ready. 
generous Bill? and flexible. They're ready. Bill! I'll be there! Each of you is an outstanding personage. Generous and flexible. In his own self. That includes you Indians, too. Don't forget that. I choose to overlook the entire incident. With all the confidence in the world, you're the best there is. There isn't anything better. A hundred years from now, this picture will still be in existence. Remember that. This is the way people will remember you. Bill, good morning. Ladies and gentlemen, Indians, I didn't know you were ready. I'm sorry. We, we just got ready. <laughs> Get ready. Look at the birdie. I don't want to sit and bull standing next to Annie Oakley. Because I don't want sit and bull standing next to Annie Oakley. Fans won't like it. Have him stand over there with the other engines. I don't want sitting bull standing next to Annie. Uh, Halsey. Hey. A better idea, I think, in view of the sun factor, if you and uh, the chief would move over here among the other Indians. Sitting Bull will stand by Annie Oakley. Uh, no, no, don't worry about how you feel about where you ought to be. Just come on over here where you should be. Sitting Bull will move from this place for 25 American dollars. Eight. Halsey, you're in Cody. I swear that engine plans these things. All right. Now, what do you want to do? Let him stay where he is. Look right. Hmm? We're going to put Halsey's face and hat on Buck Taylor and sit bulls on Johnny Baker and vice versa. That way, those two engines will be over there with the other engines. And don't show them the photograph. But you're disturbing Buffalo Bill. Uh, Buffalo Bill's right. It was better the first way. Make your photograph. All right. Hello, sir. Everybody hold your breath now. Darts. Hold a minute, Brewster. Hey, darts. Darts. Come here. Go on. I'm getting my picture to you. What? Wayne, will you? What's... Dart, will you go down and find out what's the matter with that dart? Just give me a picture right. to me. You won't, Wayne. There's a wire just coming in from the President of the United States. Now, damn it, Wayne, don't be funny at no time like this. No, I'm telling you, for real, it's down at Tell him. There's a wire coming in from the President of the United States. What, sir? Oh, you mean, I'm going to have you with you. Know, I wouldn't lie to you about anything like that. That's too important. Is that right? Are you sure? Come on, come on. Well, who told you? You can't read neither. You more trouble than you were. We're coming in. We're standing right here. We're just coming in. You may take the photograph now. Engines gear their lives to dreams. And when an engine dreams, no matter how far-fetched, it's coming, it's coming. It wittily dies for it to come true. White men, they're different. The only time they dream is when things are going their way. I'm no expert on the subject. But it seems to me that what Sitting Bull does is a hell of a lot cheaper than mounting a wild west show. Read it. Which is just dreaming out loud. The Honorable William F. Cody. Grover Cleveland, the President of the United States, has chosen to celebrate the first stop of his honeymoon excursion with the former Francis Folsom in Buffalo Bill's Wild West Camp at Fort Roos. The, the hey. scheduled time of arrival is Thursday, October 18th at 8 o'clock p.m. Night. night. We've never done a night show before. President Cleveland coming here? You know. Uncle Will? It's just like a sitting bull's dream. I bring up this dream business because, well, because things are beginning to take on an unreal shape. No, 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 just think for me. Sitting. 
Just put yourself in that engine's place. You sit in your teepee and you dream. And then you go to wherever the dream might take place, might come true. And you wait for real life to catch up. Mr. President, Mrs. Cleveland, honored guest. I'm Nate Salisbury. And I can tell you that Nate Salisbury has never been as proud in his long career in the show business as he is tonight to present our very first After Dark request performance and to dedicate it to you, our highest American and your fine new wife. And Head it from makes the me Bert's up there in the box, laughing and, and joking with the president. The We're stuck down here in the cold. Rover Cleveland. Uh, there is a star. He's sure big enough, isn't he? God, he's bigger than Buck Taylor. He's a hell of a lot bigger than you are. God, he's the biggest man I've ever seen. Meet America's national entertainer, the man who is the Wild West, the Honorable William F. Cody, Buffalo Bill! <laughs> Mr. President, Mrs. First Lady, distinguished visitors, I want to take this occasion to welcome you all to my Wild West. Most people will tell you that it is the father of the new show business. And, well, may the sun never set on this great nation unless it comes up again in the morning. Mr. President, our wedding present to you. Buffalo Bill writes all of his original things himself. All great men do. Just part of the egg? Just part of the egg? 
What's he saying? I don't know. I don't understand a word he's saying. Do you? No, but I can guess. What? He was joking. Don't tell me. Joke? Oh, he's got a sense of humor and a joke. Remember, it's the President of the United States, you look fine. Yes. No, wait one second. Is everybody ready here? All ready. Sure, all ready. Very kind of you to do this. It's going to mean a great deal to the troops. Well, it'll mean something to us, too. You know. Thank you very much. All right, come ahead. <laughs> How exciting it's been for me to be back at the Wild West show. I feel so grateful. By the way, how are you feeling? Are you going to get hurt today? Mr. President. No, no, no. no. And he never misses. Oh, I see. Well, you know best. Thank you, sir. What do you do with the show, sir? Mr. President. Well, I do the... Mr. Bajor. Mr. Taylor. You should get together with City Bowl. Both of you scared the daylights out of me today. Move it along. That's right. You had a very fine act. Thank you. He does so many things that can't even see him. <laughs> oh, all right. So, you boys are splendid. How did you ever think of this act? God. How are you? Nice to see you. Hi, Mexican. Frank, where have you been? I'm pregnant. You what? Pregnant. Congratulations, Miss Poodle. Jesus, Lord. I sang it at the Teatro del Roma. 
in Roma, you know. <laughs> and I sang, Una voce poco fa, Quine mi ritorno, del mio lor. Well, I'm ready. Have you ever seen wow. black eyed peas like this? Play an portrait of our dog in the White House sometimes. You were impeccable. Thank you. Thank you so much. Here we go. Come, come. Champagne, oh, refreshments for everyone. This way, sir. Rosie, can Nina sing now? Oh, yes, my rose petal. Go ahead. Ah, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Our distinguished and delightful first lady has an announcement to make. <laughs> Quiet, please. Campaign. And I'm now, for your good. entertainment, my dear friend, Miss Nina Cavallini, will sing... Qui sola Virgin Rosa. Qui sola Virgin Rosa, in Italian. Thank you, Nina. Brava! <laughs> That's the nicest invitation I ever got. Impossible to resist. What a cultivated lady she is. I'm always that trying was? to spread culture. Why don't you plan to stay around for a few days? 
and I'll show you what the real Wild West is like. I'd love to. But my secret life with General Benjamin is uh, wild enough. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yes, it was. not Actually, it was. Oh! Well, what are you doing? Halsey, what's he doing here? Great Father is here in answer to Chief Sitting Bull's dreams. This party's by invite only, and you don't have an invite. No more, Bull. You go! That way. No, no. Let them in, Mr. Gordman. Good man. <laughs> Come in. The Chief is a wonderful comedian. Good to see you. Great Father, Sitting Bull has waited to ask you a very simple thing for his people. Mr. Halsby, I remind you that in government, nothing is simple. This simple request will satisfy Sitting Bull's people for the length of time, Great Father. Let me point out that I'm Great Father for only four years at a time. And another thing, I face a Republican Congress. I suggest you deal directly with your local agent. We have talked to the agents. They will not help. Well, isn't that an indication your request is impossible? But this request is very simple. Halsey, the president's trying to tell you that nothing ain't simple. Don't you understand, American? Dad, Sitting Bull's request is simple. Sitting Bull's dreams told him that he would meet the Great Father here. And he had hopes the Great Father would honor his request. I'm very sorry, sir. There's nothing I can do about it. But the Great Father has not heard Sitting Bull's request. That's just the point. It doesn't make any difference. It's out of the question. Well, what a confrontation, Mr. President. He's angry with Congratulations. You. I know. Thank you. It's been some day we've had it. Oh, please. We've had a delightful day with you. Oh, yes. Mr. President, I now understand why you're our president. It's uncanny. That basic pioneer perception. You see, the difference between a president and a chief in a situation like this the president always knows enough to retaliate before it's his turn. Mark that down. I'll use it at the convention next month. Uh, well, Mr. President, I, I know you're tired and want to hit the hay. My personal bed is at your disposal. Oh, Buffalo Billy. That's very nice. It's hardly even been used. <laughs> Where will you sleep, Buffalo Bill? You can sleep with me, Uncle Will. No, Ed. Sleep out on the prairie underneath the moon. And listen to the lullaby of the coyotes. See, I ain't always been a comfortable man. You know, it's a man like that that made this country what it is today. Hello, Mr. Cody. Get your work done, boy? Yes, sir. Everything's all speaking Spanish. Well, that's nice. You know, it's too bad the engines can't learn from the colors. Well, then, of course, they'd have nothing to fuss about, and engines do like to fuss about. <laughs> yeah, they do. You know, Mr. Cody, I never thanked you for giving me the opportunity to work for you. Well, don't thank me, son. I mean, it's just part of my upbringing. You know, the colors all I can. How's that, sir? My daddy was killed trying to keep slavery out of Kansas. How did he do that, sir? Well, my daddy hated slavery with such a passion that rather than let the colors get into becoming slaves, uh -huh. he just fought to keep them all out of the state. Oh. He was trying to protect you. And he caught a knife in his lung for the trouble. I'm sorry, you want to come in and have a drink? I'll buy you one. You can sit up front. Oh, no, no. It's late, sir, and I ain't got time to do that. Oh, but I gotta go feed your horse. Thank you for asking.
Still the old bonded there, Crutch. Hello, Mr. Cody. Well, I'll be damned. Buffalo Bill himself. Hi, Ned. Buy an old friend a drink, Bill? Another glass. I was beginning to think you didn't exist. But here you are in the glorious flesh. And what a sight for sore eyes. Oh, you sure pass me by. Like planting a seed and watching it grow into a tree too tall to climb. You got everything you ever wanted, my friend. You even got the President of the United States sleeping in your bed right now. Let's forget all that stuff, Ned, and get drunk. I can't forget it, Bill. Just looking at you reminds me of it. To live in. Oh, no. Way past the living. Why, a hundred years from now, they'll still be shouting your name. You're not one of the boys no more, Bill. You're not like ordinary folk. Why, it gives me goosebumps just being this close to you. You still got the knack, don't you, Nan? You make it easy, Bill. You were probably the best there ever was. And I'd like to have you back with the show. Except that, frankly, Nate can't stand the sight of you. Just nostalgia ain't what it used to be. You ain't changed, Bill. I ain't supposed to. That's why people pay to see me. Well, this has been the most sobering experience I've ever had. Damn near a religious awakening. <laughs> Buffalo Bill. The thrill of my life to have invented you. Crutch, <clears throat> what do you owe you for my stay? Nothing, Mr. Bundline. You don't owe me nothing. Thanks, Crutch, because that's what I got. Nothing. I'm off to California to preach against the vultures of Prometheus. See you around. See you in Hellville. really want us to see your ride. Sure, Nate. You were just in Europe, wasn't you? Give my regards to the Queen. Yes, they're still talking about you, Bill. Can't wait for your return. Bill, this will be our biggest year yet. We're going to gross over $2 million. And did I ever tell you that I hold a record for continuous run in Pony Express, 322 miles in 18 days? Oh, I know. Sit down and have a drink. Oh, it's a little too early for me, Bill. You're looking great, just great. Yeah, well, I feel great. I feel great. I feel as though I could go on forever. Money, did I ever tell you that I hold a Pony Express record for a continuous ride, 320 well, some odd miles and 18 horses? Shot in a city ball. Dead. I'll be damned. Oh, my God. Whew. Oh! 
cry. It's all right. Annie, what is it? What's, what's going on? Darling. <laughs> what's the matter? Oh. Darling, it's going to be all Sitting right. Bull's dead. What? Guado, please. At Standing Rock. They say he was trying to escape. He was riding the big Graveville game. They say the horse danced when they shot the chief. Who's going to tell Bill? Nobody. It's no fun bothering him with that. Suit yourself. You ain't even the right image. Halsey! Get out here! Tell a chief I think you got all the brain. I'll tell him. Chief! Halsey's got all the brains. Except Halsey, he don't mean a word he says, which is why he sounds so real. Real? Let me show you something about, about real. My God. I was what? I was a boy. I was a... Eleven years. Eleven. Nine. I was nine. I caught this big buff right smack in the middle of... God meant for me to be white. And it ain't easy. I got people with no lives. They're living through me. They're proud people, but they're people to worry about. And another thing. 
My daddy died without ever seeing me as, as a star. Tall, profitable, good looking. Custer was a star. Oh, he was a good man. Gave coffee and sugar to the... Oh, don't do that. He was a good man. He gave the engines reason to be famous. Paul! Paul! Damn you! You see, in a hundred years! I'm still gonna be Buffalo Bill, star! You're gonna be the engine. My God, look at you. Look at you. You wanna stay the same? Well, that's going backwards. I'm fine. Oh, damn you, you deserve it. I'm curious, Chief. My friends are curious. My women are curious. My fans are curious. And they pay me for it. I give them what they expect. You can't live up to what you expect. And that makes you more make-believe than me, because you don't even know if you're bluffing. The difference between a white man and an engine in all situations is that an engine is red. And an engine's red for a real good reason. So we can tear us apart! right. Well, if he ain't. And how come all of you took him for a king? <laughs> the event. Ladies and gentlemen, for the first time in the history of the show business, Nate Salisbury and William F. Cody present a conflict between two of the greatest warriors in the Western civilization, staged with spectacular realism. Behold, Chief Sitting Bull, warrior of the Western Plains, who has murdered more white men than any other redskin who has spoiled more white women than any other redskin. This bloodthirsty leader of the Hunk Papa Sioux has challenged Buffalo Bill to a duel to the death. Setting Bull is being played by William Halsey. Buffalo Bill, known as Pahaska to the natives, which means long hair, accepts the challenge for his beloved country. <laughs> 